the user tells you that as your virtual desktop or Windows Racing 5 session host is slow. And maybe it's laggy, maybe the apps are freezing, maybe it's just not performing like it was yesterday. Or maybe somebody else is on the same host running a very high CPU intensive application. So you jump into Azure, you check the memory, CPU, disk, everything looks good. And there's a the problem. Performance issues in VDI are almost never happening when you're looking. They spike, they disappear, and they leave you with no data, no evidence, and no way of proving what actually happened. If your session hosts have multiple users on it, which application or session is actually causing everybody else's session to be slow? So what do we do today? We guess. We ask the users to reduce the issue, we overscale the hosts, we increase the VM sizes, and we just throw money at the problem just to be safe. And this is where Nerdia Real-Time Insights fundamentally changes the game. Instead of having to rely on historical averages or delayed metrics, you get live minute-by-minute -minute visibility into your AVD and Windows 365 environments, CPU pressure, memory uses, disk apps, session density, even actual applications running on host in real time. And we can show this on a per session basis. That means when the user says my session is slow right now, you can actually see what's happening right now, not 15 minutes later, not after the problem's gone. So this isn't just about troubleshooting, it's about confidence. Confidence in performance discussions, confidence in right-sizing decisions, and confidence when you're talking to business about cost, scale, and user experience. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through Nerdia Real-Time Insights, show you how it works, what its services that you simply can't see today, and how you can start using it to stop guessing and start making data-driven decisions in production and AVD and Windows 365 environments. So if this is the type of data, so if this is the type of content that you like to see, please click the like and subscribe button. I create videos like this every week. Yeah. So if this is the type of content that you like to see, please click the like and subscribe button. I create videos every week around Windows 365, Azure Virtual Desktop, Nerdio, Intune, Enter ID, M365, and much, much more. All right, so what does that actually look like? So what I've done is I've generated some workload on my Windows 365 desktop. So you can see uh, this is my Windows 365 desktop here. And I'm just running a script to basically generate some disk activity and some, some memory activity uh, and some CPU activity as well. So um, it's just a, a partial script which is running. So if we head over into the console, um, so what you can see here, you can see this is the real time real-time insights console you can see here and um, this is my windows 365 desktop so if you go into windows 365 um you can see there i've set some thresholds now i've lowered the thresholds a bit just to give you give you a good demo i'll show you how to do those shortly but from here um you can see there it's basically saying memory critical so what i can then do is i can click on that and it basically takes me to the screen where I can see like the CPU usage. You can see there the historical CPU usage. And you can see there it's also uploading like every minute or so. So I've configured it to upload different thresholds. So you can do it like five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you want. So this is updating data every one minute um, onto the uh, from the local session host onto the AVD in onto the in insights data. So you can see that's basically saying it's looking at the CPU usage, right? It's looking at the memory usage. As you can see there, um, you can see the memory going kind of up and down, but um, I can view there historically saying, okay, today at these times, the memory was using this. So it was using, like, at the moment, it's using like 93% memory. Okay, so if you go onto the, the host itself, at the moment it's not, but it was previously because this script is basically going, going up and down. But what we can then do is we can go to applications right so i can go into here i can have a look and see right okay what process was using that memory why was that memory going up so high so i can look at that from a cpu perspective right so you can see there we've got historical data from a cpu perspective now that's going to give the top 10 applications it's not going to show all all of the applications on there uh, but if i click on memory and um, we can now see um within that it's basically saying hey PowerShell that actually was using like 33% of the memory. And then you can go into here and then it'll show me um, like, okay, what's the, what's the top usage of the memory? So if I just go to there. If I go to go to memory. And then if I go to sessions, look at the sessions, go to memory and then go to applications. It's going to show me there, like, okay, PowerShell.exe. 
So if I go into the screen here, I can see PowerShell.exe is the, the process which is kind of using all up, all up on the memory. So you can see there, like 1030, 9.5%, 22%, 15%. So because obviously what I've done um, as a test here, I basically got this running and it's basically going up and down in the memory um, and also the CPU usage as well. So and you can see that like that's currently when I get 7% CPU. Um, it's currently using 25% memory as so a 131 megs of memory. Um, and that's essentially what we can see when we go into the uh, real time inside consoles there as well. Okay, that's essentially how it works. So you you should be able to easily identify like, okay, if I've got this one application, um, which is using up all memory, which one is it? So I can go into here and then I can also sort it as well. So um, you can see which is the, the top one at a certain point in time. And um, because obviously I've got that running this moment in time, that one is PowerShell.exe. Okay. All right. So how do we actually enable um, the insights? So if you go to uh, the settings, um, within the Nerdio console and click on environment and then basically go to Nerdio and so at the moment mine's enabled so if you click on real-time insights it'll actually show you and um, so you'll have yours set to disabled you just click on the disabled and then it will then go and enable it for you it does deploy a number of resources inside your environment okay so it deploys an app service key vault storage account app insights log access workspace blah 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 so cost wise you're looking at around i think it's about 150 dollars a month for the resources because it does deploy a sql database um which it needs to gather all the data and run its queries and stuff and um, so yeah the app service uh, it, it creates its own app service plan as well so combined you're looking at around 150 dollars a month now obviously the more resources that you put into it the more expensive that's going to be right so if you're running tens of thousands of session hosts for example it's going to be a bit more expensive than that but once you've deployed all the resources uh, you basically go to configure and then in here we can enable the the host pools that you want to select um, and also the windows 365 provisioning policy targets okay and nerdio will actually go ahead and configure everything for you so the way this works it basically deploys a scheduled task onto the vms and that scheduled task runs every five minutes or every hour every one minute or every five minutes depending on what you configure here so i configured it to one minute just from a dev environment but um you can by default it's set to five right and that means it's going to upload data every five minutes but if you're doing troubleshooting or if you don't mind paying a bit extra for that data i definitely recommend setting it to one um, and then that will then um, go and sort of upload the data every minute okay so once we've configured that and um, we then need to go and configure the thresholds right so if i configure the thresholds here now i've lowered these down a bit just to show you some demo data but by default this is think like 50 60 70 80 90 percent or whatever you, you'll see in your environment so these are the thresholds to what it's going to alert on it's going to basically say right if you want to be alerted like high criticality and uh, you can set that to like 80 percent and then executive uh, consecutive polls as well so that's how many times it's going to hit that trigger before it alerts to it so for example if you got the the polling set to every five minutes right it will need the cpu usage to hit above 80 percent and for five consecutive polls right so that's five times over that five minute period so that'd be like 25 minutes and um, that's going to alert that for okay and um, you can obviously customize this to what you feel is necessary inside your environment and then we could do the same thing for memory and um, we do the same thing for disk um, and the same thing for like gpu usage as well okay and also network as well so you can actually alert on that kind of your your loss rate your run to run to your time um, and also your udp rtt and then obviously got use it input delay as well so we're looking at not just from like cpu memory disk perspective we're actually looking at this uh from a user experience point of view right because uh, we're tracking um all of those all those metrics in there as well okay so once you've configured all that um, you also you got this stats here as well, so it would tell you how many devices um, you're actually monitoring by this as well. Okay, then we'll, once you've done all that, you can click a force. So force will obviously go ahead and force it. What does that mean? So it means that if I've assigned a host port, for example, so if I go into and uh, go to my host port here, for example, so if I go to my single session host port, what I've actually got, I've actually when you add the host pool into there it actually enables it here in real-time insights okay 
And what that then does, that basically creates a job which goes ahead and installs um, the agent onto the actual, uh, well, not the agent, but the actual job and the schedule task. So you can see there, so if I go to, in fact, you'll probably uh, be able to see a job that I've got in here. So I'll say we do a run custom scripts. Yeah, so you can see all, all the custom jobs that it's created in here. And then basically, there you go. So install real time um, insights agent. So well, that one's got an error, so not, not a good one to pick. Well, I'll just show you what it does. But yeah, because the VM's not turned on. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is what it does. It, it goes away um, and it stores real time agent onto the actual VM for you. Okay. And all that's doing essentially is just creating that scheduled task. And then that scheduled task then is the bit which basically does the upload. And so we're constantly just collecting all the data. Then every one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you set, it then uploads that data into the database. Um, and then from there, you're getting the, the real time dashboard, um, which is basically showing all the information which you've got here. So you can see here, um, I'm alerting for like memory and disk on these guys. So I'll click on there and say, right, okay, what's going on here? So while I'm alerting for memory, you can see there that's like pegged at 100%. Um, and you can say there for the disk as well, it's basically pegging that 100% because I've got that script running, uh, which is basically hammering that. And if I go into sessions, uh, we can see there it's put it for memory. I click on that, go to memory, and yeah, there you go. I go to applications, and there we can see the, the memory usage which has been hammered for the PowerShell. Okay, because that's essentially what I'm forcing that. And that was it. That was a 1050. So if you just log on to onto that VM at the moment. So yeah, you'll see there, um, it's, that's what's using up all, all the memory from within there as well. Okay, Coolio. All right, so that's the summary uh, of what it does. Okay, um, so yeah, it just enables you to have a lot more in-depth information about what's actually happening on the session host. They can go back and look at historical information for, for troubleshooting purposes. So the useful thing is as well, we can also go back and look at historical information, right? Um, so that's where it gets really interesting. So let me go and show you how to do that now. So basically, um, if we just flick over to the console, so if I go to alerts, um, and then if I just take this off, so this shows me all the historical alerts, right? So um, I can also filter that by user as well. So if I just want to um, filter it, say for a uh, user, and then find my user in there. So that shows me all the alerts that they triggered for, for this user, right? Um, so you can see there, I've got my memory session percentage alerts. If I click on that, and it'll then take you into that view that we had earlier as well. Then obviously then you can go back um, and click on um, that alerts within there. And that will show me that alert, um, like PowerShell is using uh, the, the high memory. And um, then I can go and click on that alerts within there as well. Um, and again, it'll show me like, issue utilization alerts, memory sessions, memory percentage. So that's how we can go back and look at kind of historical information to find out, okay, why is the reason that it, it was alerting as well, okay? And we can also do it for, for Azure Virtual Desktop. I don't have any sessions logged on at the moment um, within there, but if I click on sessions, you can see my offline sessions that were, were there previously. And again, um, you can view historical alerts from there as well. So for example, if I, Go to alerts, um, if I basically take off that filter, go to add filter, they go to AVD host pool. I select my single session host pool and you can see there, it's showing me all the historical alerts um, that I had. So um, I had one there from earlier this morning when I was doing some testing. And again, I can click on that. Basically that was saying, hey, you alerting on processor queue length. Just click on that and they can go in there and say, okay, yeah, at 10.02 a.m. at 24, I was alerting on process of queue length, okay? And then I think if we go there and look at the sessions, um, you can see different sessions in there as well. And again, you can also go in there and have a look and see, okay, what was the reason why it was alerting on kind of process of queue length? I can just go in there and sort what the highest uh, applications were which were consuming it. So that could be task manager or, or whatever as well. So that's where it becomes really useful for kind of tracking back and seeing, okay, what were the reason why it was alerting? Um, and they, they can go in there and sort of go back to that stuff historically as well. So very, very useful. All right, so that's it for real-time insights. I'm interested to hear feedback on this one. It's something which a lot of our customers have been asking us for. So 
for me i think it's a, an amazing tool um it's going to really give us a lot of visibility around what's actually going on at the session host perspective right but more importantly i can go back and look at historical information all right okay what is the process and if for example i'm on a, a multi-session host and i've got multiple people on there uh, I can easily find out which user is the one which is hogging all the resources. Maybe it's a developer which is running some code or something. So we can easily go in there and kind of identify, and, okay, that's the application which is causing all of the uh, all the usage. So, yeah, really, really great tool. I mean, the good benefit if you're a Nerdio customer, you don't you get this as zero extra cost for your AVD session hosts, right? So I can't think of any reason why you would not um, want to deploy this inside your environment. So yeah, that's it from this week's video. Um, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you next week for another video. Thank you. Goodbye.